going to apologize in advance for the slide deck because it's got no contrast, which is a part of the theme of you know being in the background and covert. That's right, steganography. All right, bonus points. Uh, you guys are great. I, I'm getting a picture of the audience. This will be a first, huh? This this goes into a database. <laughs> I'm not telling you which one. All right, smile. All righty, look at that. Okie dokie. So, uh, if you can't see that, that's by design. What has the NSA done for me lately is the name of the topic. And the idea is not really to validate one position or another, but really to give you an alternative perspective of sorts, just to kind of look at what what's going on, not from the legalistic sense, because we're going to have great coverage from EFF on that. And uh, that'll be Sunday, as well as the, the talk that you're probably just coming from that they, they gave on digital rights. So I'm not a lawyer, and I won't go down that road. Uh, my name's Tim O'Neill. Um, I have an email at timothyoneill at boisestate.edu, so if you have questions or comments, please feel free to contact me at that address. So, so basically, our, our issues with NSA, or should we say extrajudicial domestic surveillance, is really, uh, you know, who are these guys, uh, these organizations that are charged with both security as well as surveillance and, and whatnot. Uh, if you know a lot about the, the tradecraft world of espionage or spying, you know that people abhor revealing secrets or methods or sources. It's an absolute no-no. But by the same token, uh, many of the techniques utilized for surveillance or for intelligence gathering or collection may not necessarily be, uh, well, let's say legal in that regard. So there's really two different perspectives to look at. And the first one is, is, is that that the government might claim. Uh, you can't read this, I'll, I'll read it to you, but a surveillance threat to liberty. So if, if you're with the ACLU or the EFF or just a concerned citizen, you would say the surveillance threat to liberty consists of multiple and overlapping collection efforts. So it's, it's not just going to be the NSA. It's going to be a number of alphabet soup agencies as well as some private contractors and others who are engaged in a large collective action. So to, to pin this all on you know, the NSA pinata and beat it, to me, is a little bit naive or maybe even unfair. The legislation obviously is is perhaps dubious and questionable, and and Saturday or is it Sunday at noon? The EFF has the NSA versus AT&T lawsuit, so this will be a great place to get a free plug for those guys and go see that talk and find out those those issues from that perspective, the legalistic. The other argument that could be made, and I can't define a terrorist. One man's terrorist is another's insurgent. However. The, the government's rationale might be to explain to you that a terrorist threat to liberty would consist of physical and psychological disruption and or injury. So you've got a surveillance threat to liberty and a, terror, a terrorist threat to liberty. So we're going to try to balance. I, I, I'm all about balance. I'm a, I'm a Libra, so. <laughs> all righty. OK, historical overview of, of intelligence. The world's second oldest profession is basically espionage. And who really is a master at tradecraft? Who's really good at this kind of a endeavor? You are. Well, OK. Well, actually, no. I was going to say teenage girls, because who can gossip? I mean, come on. These, they're, they're, these people are masters of deception. <laughs> so the idea is, for those who can't read, again, this is by design. So. Uh, operate in total secrecy or at least compartmentalize on what's called a need-to-know basis. And ideally, if I'm an operative or an agency, which I'm not so you can't get a t-shirt, uh, I don't want to give you public disclosure. Right? I mean, that's just nature versus nurture. It's in the nature of these groups 
to be secretive and to hold the cards close to the chest. Remember, other lives are at stake when you think, well, they should reveal everything. Well, other lives are at stake. Down, down, you know, cutouts and agents and access folks and recruiting. So there's other lives at stake. Uh, historically, uh, the early warning was, was designed to provide to the president uh, an alarm about national security issues. So, hey, one by land or two by sea, the last guy was from the UK, we won't pick on him, but because uh, he was talking quite eloquently about the, the US visit program. So if you need a green card and you come to this country, well, these are kind of alarm systems of, of sorts. And if you've ever heard of the phrase, speaking truth to power, you'll understand this is the intelligence agencies with an intelligent product from collection, giving that to the president or authority decision type makers. Alrighty. So, historical overview of signals intelligence. Um, you know, did this just happen in 2002? Well, no, not really. We can go back in history, at least in America, and see that there was what's called a black chamber. And uh, black chambers are historically organizations that read snail mail or the old telegram, like Western Union. And so, in fact, the Austrians used to have a the, the most famous black chamber, Geheim Kabnitz Kanzlerei. If you're from Germany or Austria, I apologize. Um, and then, of course, Yardley, who's the, the gentleman in the book picture, he started MI8, or what's called the American Black Chamber. Wiretaps were also used as early as the, the First World War. That, that meaning coming off of telegrams, so Morse code and trying to intercept radio signals. So this is not necessarily new. There's a paradigm shift, however, in intelligence. So today's secret agent is not James Bond. Uh, you can have various types of individuals with various skill levels and the ability to infiltrate. Uh, she, you know what, she can go anywhere she wants. She's got all access as far as I'm concerned, but that, as my friend Jen would point out, that's the male bias of the main computer guys. Because we were having a discussion earlier about swordfish. Everyone's seen swordfish? And, it, and, and in fact, if you saw Johnny Long's presentation, if you go tomorrow to his Hollywood, Hacking Hollywood, uh, he'll, he'll show you some great clips. And I'm not going to steal that thunder, but no, it, wow. All righty, so the other threat to, to information collection or intelligence agency is the internet or the electronic world. So these are two paradigms that they have not been necessarily accustomed to historically. Uh, Humid intel challenges. How many people speak Tajik? Uh, I don't, you don't, we probably couldn't get into the areas that, that one would be needed. Going deaf, drowning in the data. This might apply to the, the signals folks. They can't hear because of the cell phones or because of other media. They're, they're drowning in so many emails and faxes that to pull that needle out of the haystack is increasingly more difficult. Can we say obsolete? I don't know. I'm sure there's people who are very concerned. Analog to digital is also a transformation that fiber pipe the, the fiber optics are going to present some real challenges if you're trying to tap uh, information. Uh, E-crime and terrorists, the, the so-called terrorists, right? Uh, I, I don't define that. But they alter their communication methods or methodologies. Why? They use blog, they use spam, uh, steganography like my slide. Um, they've, you know, encryption, VoIP. If you go to Johnny's, if you've been to his, Johnny Long's forensic talk about the thousand cuts, you found out that Johnny has a hex editor that does a good job of, of your comment fields or some other non-suspicious places to put information or messaging. And then finally, at 9-11, who was more informed? The person who sat in bed and watched CNN, the classified news network? So the, the timing here is, is critical. Okay, where does that lead us? FISA, there's great discussions on FISA with EFF here. I don't want to really go through a whole lot of that, but to tell you that, well, here's this act, and that the argument the government would make is simply that it was appropriate for large state actors such as the USSR. However, for non-state entities or the so-called NGOs or whatnot, 
uh, it's too nebulous. They're too, they, they've got wiggle room, they're slippery. So it's, they would claim it's ill-suited by today's definition of what national borders are, uh, the geopolitic. And besides, these so-called persons of interest, they don't wear uniforms or have a fixed physical address. So, what's at stake? I would propose striking some kind of a balance. And it's, it's terrific that we're having that dialogue throughout three or four talks at this very conference. So that's, that's fantastic to see that happen. Um, this is actually the wrong document. It's not the Bill of Rights, but then it's, it's kind of an old parchment document that would be representative. But essentially, the Constitution is at stake, separation of powers. Uh, what we're seeing is a, uh, is a balance between how do you collect without being invasive to, let, let's be frank here, American citizens. How do you protect their privacy while at the same token getting relevant critical information to offset uh, a likely threat? The second item of discussion, this is probably the really important one, is disclosure to the public. Uh, folks like the ACLU and the EFF would argue that we got to have some separations of power of governmental actions and, and this oversight within the agencies. Who is the decider? If you saw that famous clip by George Bush, he would say that he's the decider. Well, I, uh, then this maybe should be called, what has George Bush done for me? If that makes any sense. Okay, I'm going to watch for that red dot on my forehead. Uh, okay, so uh, the schedule's changed a little bit, but we've got Meet the Fed sometime today. Uh, it's in the calendar. But this would be a great aspect to go see what these people are doing from the horse's mouth, so to speak. And also then, uh, as I, I suggested, that the EFF NSA versus the ATT lawsuit, that litigation, that is coming up on Sunday. So these would be great uh, fundamental talks. Basically, I wanted to go into what is uh, the domestic and international espionage techniques and, and, quite frankly, the subsequent blowback. Now, blowback is a term, for those of you uh, who, who don't know, this is when uh, things go south, things go wrong with an operation like the Bay of Pigs and people found out, oops. Oh, that's not true. Okay. Okay. All right. So we got a we have a correction with the gentleman saying the blowback's actually media that was fabricated or propaganda placed in foreign uh, media sources and then brought back to say USA Today for our consumption. Um, the standard wiretaps, of course, are law enforcement. Uh, it's a big transition between law enforcement and intelligence. I mean, if in intelligence you don't necessarily need to have a prosecution or an arrest, but in the law enforcement paradigm, you do need to have uh, convictions. That might be very difficult. If you convict somebody, you may blow your sources and your operation. Are you a I want a t-shirt. <laughs> oh, you know, all right. Phone, phone records, obviously the domestic calls. So uh, implies cooperation with, with the groups like AT&T, Verizon, Bell South, or others who, who may have contributed to that endeavor. Um, now, the NSA has not billed the taxpayer for that. So if you have a subscription or a service with those fine companies, then you're actually paying for the surveillance. <clears throat> Okay, in 1986, the U.S. government had the Economic Communications Privacy Act to protect, this is iron, the irony, is to protect communication with email, uh, cell phones, other digital things. Now, there's always a caveat here and there about when we're in wartime and what presidential authorities there are, but I thought this was interesting to have uh, a legislative protection for digital communications. And then Kayla comes out, a lot of people are probably familiar with Kayla, but Kayla says, hey, we, we have the right as the government to come in now and place onto the uh, existing service providers some kind of a data collection. So making it easier for law enforcement wiretapping and such. And then finally we have a, a great device called NARIS, S-T-A, 
semantic transfer analyzer 6400. So if we go to the website, we can actually see the uh, proprietary and confidential uh, analysis schematics here of the, uh, the way the data is correlated. Uh, they have some very efficient algorithms to model and reconstruct and then do some, some traffic analysis as well as semantics. Uh, anyone have a Nimbus 2000? All right, well th this is not a secret listening device, although there's probably a lot of good information that you could get from one of these. All right, domestic international techniques. Anyone remember the, uh, anyone? <laughs> well, that's what we, we want, what, that's what, hey, cheers. All right, what the fuck? I happen to have a Nimbus right now. <laughs> All righty. So anyone remember the DARPA project? Well, uh, who knows where it went? Is it, is it classified now? But if you understood the, the implications, it was to have a total information awareness collecting all available information in coordination with a couple of other projects that would enable people to have a lot of decision making power based on predictive analysis. Uh, the internet usage, data and text mining, text, this, this data text mining business is at rest and in motion. Now, in motion, okay, so transmission and, and whatnot, packet sniffing or blah, blah. But at rest, I mean, to me, it was, so my data right now is at rest. I, I don't know. So maybe there's other experts here who could really delve into what they mean by how are they getting information at rest. So that, that's good to know. Civilian contractors, there are a lot of companies that work for the government and provide that intellectual leverage and capability. U.S. Treasury uh, had a, a program to look at financial records at SWIFT, which is located in Belgium. So we're looking at financial records. So you're seeing that the, the NSA is, is, is but one player in, in an orchestra of collection techniques. And then finally, you've got foreign agencies. So you might have like the Deutsche Bundesnachrichtendienst, which is kind of like our version of the NSA of sorts, a very signals-oriented uh, uh, group. You might have GCHQ, the English equivalent, uh, MI6 or others. They, they may share information. Uh, the US Army recently in the Pentagon had that case where a number of Quakers had been placed on a suspect list for activities that were questionable regarding protests of recruiting. So they have a, a program called Talon Threat and Local Observation Notice. So this would be where folks from Army MI would go and they would watch your activities at a protest and make note of that. They would also use social uh, network analysis, so think of this as kind of like the military equivalent of Friendster. So you hung out with so-and-so, and Betty Jo is related with, with Rand. Now don't they burn things? No, that's Elf. Elf burns things. Hmm. And you're trying to prohibit, you know, recruitment to the military for some reason? Local police also have what's called criminal intelligence divisions, and they also work with the joint task force. So oftentimes you'll have the stovepipes of information uh, now freely flowing or flowing more freely than, than traditionally or, or legislatively restricted. And then, of course, the, the use of confidential informants with the FBI. Now, interestingly enough, this quote that you can't see by design is coming directly from a DOJ manual on the informant, the confidential informants themselves. And it says, however, undercover techniques inherently involve an element of deception and may require cooperation with persons whose motivation and conduct are open to question. Hmm. So that, you know, we're not dealing with maybe the most uh, squeaky clean Mr. Rogers types all the time. 
How about Google? So uh, now, if we've got to see any of, uh, again, Johnny Long's Google, uh, this is great. Here you see, you know, I did a search for French military victories, and Google says, well, you mean defeats? <laughs> All right. Okay. Now, I was a little bit worried, well, if the NSA has all my calls and I got my cell phone and they track me with GPS, well, what does Google know about me? This is crazy. I'm not, you know, they got my call records or they got my address. And so I went and I Googled and, uh, yeah, they, they know where I live and they know what I do. And anybody knows that now. So I'm like, okay, there, there's got to be a balance maybe there as well with the open source. But you can see the power of the open source is being uh, realized as well by these governmental entities. Oh, anyone have Google Mail? So based on your mail, you get some messaging uh, targeted ads. You know, let's say that they're right size just for you. Well, it's probably hard to see, but my, the, the ad that came to me was, don't tap our wireless. Go to www.workingassetswireless.com. Switch to a cell company supporting ACLU's lawsuit based on my emails. So, oh, by the way, Jeff, uh, you, you're in that list. So, uh, yeah, that's kind of scary. We're, we're both from Boise here. Okay, super secret spy stuff. I thought, well, what, what if you buy stuff, you know, off the internet? Are there any disclaimers? Hey, you got a mini par parabolic and a tin can with a string. So, uh, disclaimers, remember, play safe when spying. Play nice. Okay, quote directly from the site, devices may not be used to violate the privacy rights of others to access or intercept electronic communications in violation of wiretap statutes. So I, I can't really do that. And phone tapping. And eavesdropping is illegal in certain states. So there you go. A couple of the, the cool things. They have a pen recorder, and it actually has earphones. So you got the ability to, to hear what the person borrowing your pen is saying. You, have a, you also have a pen detector, so you can do a wireless detector with your other pen. And then here's the telephone voice analyzer. And uh, that's it for me. That was, that was turbo, wasn't it? Do we have time for a question or two? Or yeah, how? let's go two minutes. Okay, let's take some questions at this time. <laughs> uh, oh, wasn't that in Google? Uh, that's on a need-to-know basis. Remember, sources and methods shouldn't... Uh, I, I can neither confirm nor deny any such activities if they did, in fact, exist. Oh, okay. Well, we, we can. T we, you can buy me another Red Bull vodka. It's, it's just stoli. Do, do we have another question? Anybody? Bueller. Bueller. The blue turf. The blue turf is a winning strategy to create a national champion. Oh, uh, you know what? They wanted to be. They, they, we have seagulls, and they get confused. And they fly in. Uh, uh, anything else? All right. All right, folks, thank you very much. And the next speaker will be right with you.